what is up? We have reached B for the contest where the person who gave out Gabe Davis first first score on the touchdown, 10 to 1, is going to make an appearance here and talk a little CFL. He was an internet hit on the ETOF 2 and Sports Show last Tuesday. The man, the myth, the legend, XFL Jim. How are you doing today, my man? I'm doing fantastic. I'm excited. I'm ready to go on the road tomorrow, heading up to Kansas City to eventually slide over to Manhattan, Kansas for that K-State, Missouri game. And before you know it, Duke, Kansas, coming up. Coming up, man. So excited, dude. I am so excited. Those who don't know, Jim and I are going to be live streaming that game on YouTube and Twitch. It's going to be going all over social media. There'll be alcohol consumption, food eating. You have to consume alcohol if you're watching Duke, Kansas. You know, just... You know, we'll have, we'll have some special guests. Um, I may have DM'd a professional tennis player, top 100 in the nation, see if they want to come on. So, uh, yeah, it should be a good time. But we're not here to talk about the football, college football game of the year. We're here to talk a little bit about the CFL. Um, last week, Ottawa defeated Montreal 38-24. to Winnipeg beat uh, the Rough Riders. 20 to 18 crazy game last like last second field goal to make that win for Winnipeg Four total points scored in the fourth quarter, four total points in the second half Toronto demolished Hamilton 28 to eight and uh, Calgary defeated the Elks 26 to 18 Elks covered though. The team's covered win. good teams win great teams cover. Now we're going to be using uh, the line's over on PointsBet. PointsBet, the new sponsor of the ETOF21 podcast. So let's pull these bad boys up here. Um, we are looking at the BC Lions laying three and a half on the road against Montreal. Um, over <sighs> under here is 53 and a half. A little bit of interesting. No, no Nathan Rourke, correct? No, Nathan Rourke. Um, I'm interested to see who BC has at quarterback. I I don't know if Vernon Adams is available to play this week or if he has to wait another week and play next week. If he's available, that's a definite upgrade. Otherwise, BC is still like on a fade list for me. And it's kind of hard to be for them to be this number on the road. Road favorite's wild. You know, just a road favorite when you have so many questions at quarterback. And it's not like Montreal is completely, what's the word, inept at the position at as a football team. The thing with Montreal is they are maybe the most unpredictable team in any of the football leagues. They could turn around like they they're the only team that's beaten Winnipeg. They are the only team that has beaten the Bombers this year. But guess what? They lost to Ottawa last week. Maybe one of the worst teams in the league. Has there been a bigger disappointment than Ottawa? Uh you could argue Edmonton. Okay. Uh, I would actually Hamilton. Hamilton, one hundred percent, has been a way bigger disappointment than Ottawa. If you look at the standings, Ottawa still alive for the East. Technically, somehow, still alive. For it's the because East. it's because the the CFL, the East Division, is just insane. It they eat each other up. It's crazy. It is it is absolutely bananas. Um, I feel like I got to play Montreal here. I'm I'm on Montreal plus the three and a half. I'm on Montreal money line. Montreal, I like it. I like it. Uh, next game, we talked about them. We got the Toronto Argonauts, another small road favorite, laying one and a half against the Ottawa Redbacks, over under 47 and a half. Before we go into that, over under here on the BC game. 52 and a half, that's too many points. Give me the under. Um. Here we have the over under of 47 and a half. You know how I feel about road favorites, my man. Well, I, I, I like yes, it. yes, but with how low this is, because you know there are two teams in the CFL with extremely long active home losing streaks. That's true. Ottawa, I don't think, has won a game at home in like a year and a half, like since mid last year. That means they're due. I mean, you can say that. You can say that, but they've been really, really bad at home. I'm on Toronto. You're, ooh, ooh. If this was like, if this was like plus three and a half, 
if this was plus four, I'd be all over Ottawa to cover the spread. Because they do play with heart, and I believe they are undefeated since Nick Arbuckle got the starting job. Uh, so they're just 2-0 and with him. That's all that means. But this is a very, very important game for the East Division. Uh, if Toronto wins this, they basically cement themselves as the top team. They're already the team to beat in the East. McLeod Bethel Thompson, like, he brings it out when he needs to. I like Toronto, and this is just a brain play of fade Ottawa when they're at home. Next game. I'm also on the over. I'm on the over in this game. You're on the over? On the over? Okay. So over 47 and a half in Toronto minus a point and a half. Um, next game, we are going to Saskatchewan. Little rematch. The Banjo Bowl. The Blue Bombers. Uh, Saskatchewan getting seven and a half over under 44 and a half. Um, yeah, I don't know here, man. Like, Give me the Riders plus seven and a half. The Bombers, they've been playing some – like the last four weeks, they've been letting teams hang around. They haven't been playing the, the – brand of football that they started out with their run game has gotten worse and they just can't put these teams away their defense is still really good both these defenses are phenomenal so i like the under even even that low of a total i like the under and i like the writers to cover okay i mean there was what was it four points scored in that second yeah that's i mean zach kolaros has been looking a little off that defensive line for Saskatchewan is still good, even without the dirtiest player in the CFL, Mr. Marino, out. He's he's off the team. He got booted. But uh, the Saskatchewan defense is still great. And Cody Fajardo could maybe string something together. But even if he doesn't, like this, this Rough Riders team is still good enough to be competitive. I mean, have they really blown anyone out? I'm trying to remember back. Um, Winnipeg? Winnipeg's yeah, blown a few teams out like we two. Yeah. One by two the week before. Then had a I, bye. They blew up BC. Lost by three. Oh, they beat the the last the fourth of August. They won by fifteen against Montreal. Then the last week they then the following week they proceeded to lose to them. Since that loss, like Winnipeg has not been the same. Um now the last game on the docket. Of the triple header on Saturday. I was going to, what do we think about the triple header on Saturday? Dude, I like it. I You're like going to be seeing a lot more of this because uh, they don't want to go up against the NFL for good reason. They don't. But they, they'll go up against college, though? You really don't have a choice. You got to go one or the other. Yeah, that's true. And, I, and like, I if I'm them, I'm going up against college more than the NFL. Yeah, that's true. It's tough. Because college is a little different. I mean, there's people like you that watch every game because this is how we make our money. But then there's also, but then the the majority of the people are loyal people, and yeah. they'll watch like the Bama game or the Texas game, you know. So, um, ooh, jeez. Again, with these crazy spreads, another road heavy favorite. That's insane, dude. Ten. It's a lot. It's a lot. Edmonton also similar to Ottawa. Terrible at home. I don't think Edmonton has... So technically, the Elks haven't won at home since 2019. Uh, The longest active home losing streak. They're bad. They're bad at home. But they play with heart, and they're going to... I think they're going to cover the spread. I'm on the plus 10, and I'm on the over. Taylor Cornelius has that dog in him, dude. You, you 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 like the dog. You like the dog. The um, issue is Edmonton's so injured. I think like three, like two or three of their top wide receivers are injured. It's it's nuts. What if I look to do something like this? Boom. Start a parlay. Boom. 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 I mean, dude, just take I hate it. Dogs. I hate it. You hate it? Yeah, because Ottawa and Edmonton aren't going to win at home. Edmonton and Edmonton aren't going to win at home. Okay. All right. Like, I believe in the Rough Riders. I might sprinkle a little on the Rough Riders. 
But all right, so let's go over here. Let's build a parlay for the people because I have people telling me they want parlays. So Jim and I are going to build a parlay. We're going to build. If you want the underdog money line parlay, it's the Alouettes and the Riders. Well, let, let's let's build a parlay. Let's build a three. Okay. Let's build a three leg parlay. Okay. So you want a three or you want every game action? No, no, just just three legs. I like the okay. three and a half here. Love the three and a half. All right, so leg one, we're going Montreal plus three and a half. Leg two. Um, I mean, I feel this. I feel with the questions at quarterback, we really can't play the fifty-three and a half. No, I wouldn't touch that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't but, touch that. I and and the flip side with that, Montreal's so unpredictable. We can't play the under fifty three and a half. Yeah, can't d- don't. I'm not. I don't. I don't like that total whatsoever. Uh, um, so let's go down here. We have disagreement here, so we won't play that. Anything on the side? Uh, I like the over. Okay. All right. I like the over too. So let's put that in there. I like the seven and a half here. I like the seven and a half quite a bit. There it is, plus five twenty eight. Do you want to hear my risky one? I got I got a little bit of a riskier one. Three legs. Oh, okay, a little bit of a riskier one. Here we go. Let's see what we got here. Okay, give me the Alouettes on the money line. All right, Montreal on the money line, plus one thirty six. Give me Saskatchewan on the money line, plus two fifty. And give me the Elks to cover. Cover the ten. Oh, dude, a nice little 14 to 1 parlayer. Mm. A nice little 14 to 1 parlayer. Give it to that, me, baby. That's pretty flipping juicy, dude. That is pretty flipping juicy. You got to love that, dude. I'm feeling myself right now. So, just to review, Jim's parlay is Montreal plus 136, Saskatchewan plus 250, and the Elks plus the 10. My parlay, well, Jim and I's parlay was the Alouettes plus three and a half, Ottawa and uh, Toronto over 47 and a half, and Saskatchewan plus the seven and a half. Jim is on Montreal plus three and a half, Toronto minus one and a half, and the over 47 and a half. He is on Saskatchewan plus seven and a half, the yep. over 44 and a half, and the Elks. Under, plus, under 44 and a half. Under 44 and a half in the Rough Rider Blue Bombers game. And he is on the Elks plus the 10 and the over 49 and a half. Yes, sir. There we go. Jim, why don't you tell the people where they can find you? You can find me on Twitter at XFL Jim. Find me on YouTube at XFL Jim. Uh, I'm all over. I'm 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 all over the place. I have a great time. I got a lot going on. I'm watching movies. I'm watching a lot of football. My hashtag Garage Certified Series is back. Living life is good. Is Uncle Rico Garage Certified yet? Oh, you've been Garage Certified. Yes. Yes. I feel like I'm at the cool kids table. Jim, thanks for stopping by. Congratulations on calling the ga- the Gabe gave us first touchdown uh, machine, and let's cash some CFL tickets this weekend, my let's friend. Let's do it.